was born on the 3rd of June, 1865, in London. He was the second son of Edward VII and Queen Alexandra, the then Prince and Princess of Wales. He was a grandchild of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom through his father and Christian IX of Denmark through his mother. As the second son, George was never expected to one day be king. George and his older brother, Albert Victor, were educated together, and neither of them excelled academically. At the age of 12, George and Albert Victor began training in the Navy, and from 1879, both of the brothers served on HMS Bacant. They toured the British Empire together. Unable to speak French or German, their grandmother, Queen Victoria, sent them to La Seine which resulted in very little learning of either language. As an adult, George continued to work in the Navy, serving under his uncle, Prince Alfred. While stationed in Malta, he fell in love with his cousin, Princess Marie of Edinburgh. Their mothers disliked the match. Alexandra thought the family too pro-German, and Marie's mother disliked England. Marie refused George and instead married Ferdinand, the future king of Romania. In 1891, Albert Victor proposed to Princess Victoria Mary of Tech, more commonly known as Mary. But six weeks later, in January 1892, Albert Victor died of pneumonia, caused by influenza. George was thrust into second in the line of succession. Queen Victoria pushed her grandchild to propose to Mary. George and Mary grew closer together during their shared mourning and in 1893 George proposed. Mary accepted. That same year on the 6th of July 1893 George and Mary were wed. They remained devoted to each other, never being unfaithful. George was unable to express how he felt in speech but he wrote many letters to his wife as did she, expressing their devotion and love for each other. George's career in the Navy ended when he became second in line. He was given the title of Duke of York in 1892 and began to receive constitutional history lessons. George and Mary would go on to have five sons and a daughter together. He and Mary were strict and distant with their children, not much different to how royalty raised their children at the time. They lived in York Cottage on the Sandringham Estate and led a simple, quiet life. On the 22nd of January 1901, Queen Victoria passed away and George's father ascended the throne. George was then given the title of Prince of Wales and toured the British Empire with his wife. As Prince of Wales, George was given access to state documents, unlike how his father had been when he was Prince of Wales. And George also allowed his wife to read the papers. He valued her advice and she helped him to write speeches. George supported reforms in naval training, with cadets being enrolled at the age of 12 and receiving the same education, regardless of class. These reforms were eventually implemented. On the 6th of May 1910, Edward VII died and George became king. He took the regnal name of George V. George took offence to the anti-Catholic wording of the Ascension Declaration that he was supposed to make during the opening of Parliament. He refused to open Parliament unless the offensive phrases were changed and the Ascension Declaration Act of 1910 was passed, which removed the phrases. On the 22nd of June 1911, George and Mary were crowned together at Westminster Abbey. That same year, they travelled to India for the Delhi Durbar where they were crowned Emperor and Empress of India. He was the only Emperor of India to actually be present at his own Delhi Durbar. While in India, he expressed disgust at the racial segregation. When George came to the throne, the people's budget had been rejected by the House of Lords, which was unusual as Lords normally did not veto budget bills. The Prime Minister attempted to reduce the power of the Lords, but it kept being blocked 
the Prime Minister asked George to grant another general election and to create sufficient Liberal peers if the Lords blocked legislation again. George agreed to the dissolution and the Parliament Act of 1911 was passed, which removed the power of the Lords to veto bills. On the 4th of August 1914, World War I began. Britain and its allies were at war with the German Empire and its allies. George and his family were cousins of the German Kaiser and bore German titles. In a response to the growing anti-German sentiment at the time, George changed the Royal House's surname to Windsor in 1917 and all of his British relatives relinquished their German titles. He gave his male relatives British peerages and titles. That same year, he restricted who could have the style of Royal Highness and who could have the title of Prince or Princess. By 1919, any of George's relatives who had fought on the German side of the war had their British peerages and titles revoked. In 1917, George's first cousin, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, was overthrown in the Russian Revolution. George initially decided to grant his cousins asylum, but revoked his offer after fears of revolution being sparked in the UK. The Tsar, his wife and children were murdered in 1918. George sent a British warship to Russia to rescue the extended members of the Russian imperial family. Two months after the end of the First World War, Prince John, the king's youngest son, died at the age of 13 from an epileptic fit. His death caused immense grief for both of his parents. From 1932, George began to deliver a royal Christmas speech on the radio. He would continue this every year. By 1935, after 25 years on the throne, George was much loved by the British people. George's relationship with his heir, Edward, or David as he was called in the family, deteriorated as the years went on. George was disappointed that Edward had failed to settle down and start a family. He was appalled by his affairs with married women also. In stark contrast, he was fond of Albert, his second son, who had married and had two daughters who George doted on. George's health began to suffer as he aged. He smoked heavily and by 1935 he was also taking oxygen. The death of his sister Victoria in December 1935 affected him. He became depressed and this weakened his already poor health. From the middle of January 1936, he grew weaker and drifted in and out of consciousness. On the 20th of January 1936, the king's doctor administered a lethal dose of morphine and cocaine to the king to put him out of his suffering. The royal family were not aware of his actions and the cause of the king's death did not come to light until the 1980s when the doctor's diaries were published. George's eldest son, Edward, succeeded as Edward VIII, but abdicated by the end of the year in favour of Albert, who ascended the throne as George VI. Edward VIII was born on the 23rd of June, 1894, during the reign of his great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. He was the eldest child of the then Duke and Duchess of York, the future George V and Queen Mary. At birth, he was third in the line of succession. He went by his last given name, David. David and his younger siblings were brought up by nannies and his parents were not overly affectionate with their children. However, his parents did love them. One of David's earliest nannies was abusive towards the children, and after her maltreatment of the children was discovered, she was replaced by the loving Charlotte Bill. David was tutored at home by various tutors, and when his parents travelled to the British Empire for nine months in 1901, after the death of Queen Victoria, David and his siblings stayed with their grandparents. Queen Alexandra and King Edward VII in Britain. At the age of 13, David passed his examination to enter the Royal Naval College and began there in 1907. Following two years at the Royal Naval College in Osborne, David moved on to the Royal Naval College at Dartmouth. David was withdrawn from the Naval College and placed aboard the battleship Hindustan as a midshipman. 
Following this, he entered Magdalene College in Oxford, which he was unprepared for academically. After eight terms, he left Oxford without any qualifications. David was officially invested as the Prince of Wales on the 13th of July 1911 at Carnarvon Castle in Wales. The ceremony was invented by the Welsh politician David Lloyd George and he coached David to say a few words in Welsh. During the First World War, David hoped to fight on the front lines but was refused. Despite this, David witnessed trench warfare and visited the front lines as much as possible. He was popular among veterans of the conflict. David learned how to pilot planes and gained a pilot's license in 1918. In January 1919, David's youngest sibling John died from an epileptic seizure. David was much older than John and hardly knew him, so he did not grieve for his brother's death as one would expect a brother to. In the 1920s, David represented his father at home and abroad gained much public attention for his good looks, rank and bachelor status. He was incredibly popular. Due to his good looks and charming personality, David had many admirers. Several became his mistresses. One such mistress was Marguerite Alibert, whom he met in 1917. They had a relationship for a year before David broke it off. In 1923, Alibert was acquitted of murder charges after she shot her husband. Efforts were made by the royal household to ensure that David's name was not mentioned in connection to Alibert. Other women David had relationships with included Frida Dudley Ward, Lady Furness and Wallace Simpson. David's womanising worried the Prime Minister and the King. George V was disgusted and disappointed in David. David soon became infatuated with a woman known as Wallace Simpson, an American socialite who had been twice divorced. Simpson and David's relationship worsened David's already poor relationship with his parents. On the 20th of January 1936, George V died and David ascended the throne as Edward VIII. During his 11 months as king, David paid little attention to his constitutional duties. The government were reluctant to send confidential papers to David, as they feared David would allow others to read them. David broke with tradition when it came to the coins. When a new monarch comes to the throne, they have their portrait taken and their image is stamped onto coins. Each successive monarch faces the opposite direction to their predecessor on the coins. David insisted that he face left, as his father had, to show off his hair parting. Only a handful of these coins existed. In July 1936, an assassin named Jerome Bannigan attempted to kill David with a loaded gun. David was unharmed and Bannigan was soon arrested. During the autumn, of 1936, David and Wallace cruised the Mediterranean and by October it became clear that David was planning to marry Wallace. In November, David expressed his desire to marry Wallace to the Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin. Baldwin informed him that this was unacceptable in the church and that people would not tolerate Wallace as Queen. David proposed an alternative solution. Wallace would not be queen consort, but she would enjoy a lesser title like princess or duchess, and any children they might have would not inherit the throne. This was supported by some senior politicians like Winston Churchill, but ultimately was rejected by the government. Because he was not allowed to marry Wallace, David abdicated on the 11th of December 1936. The following day, David left Britain for Austria. His brother Albert succeeded him as George VI.
David would be known only as the Duke of Windsor and reverted back to his princely title and style. David married Wallace on the 3rd of June, 1937, in France. The king forbade any members of the royal family from attending and Wallace was denied the style of Her Royal Highness. This caused lasting resentment from the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. David owned Sandringham House and Balmoral Castle, having inherited them as private properties from George V. George VI bought them from David so that they would stay in the hands of the monarch and the royal family. For years after the abdication, the relationship between the Duke and his family remained strained and David was not allowed to return to Britain. David and Wallace settled in France. In October 1937, David and Wallace visited Nazi Germany and met Adolf Hitler. This went against the advice of the British government. In the outbreak of war, the Duke and Duchess were brought back to Britain. They eventually returned to France the following year. And when Germany invaded, they fled to Biarritz and then to Spain. In July 1940, they moved to Portugal. And that same month, David was appointed governor of the Bahamas. They travelled there in August 1940 and stayed until 1945. David supported Hitler and had Nazi sympathies. The Marburg files detailed a plot by the Nazis to have the Duke join their side and have him reinstated as king with Wallace as queen. They also had letters written by the Duke to Hitler in which he encouraged relentless bombing of the United Kingdom. These letters were recovered by US troops from Germany in May 1945. After the war, the couple returned to France and remained there for the rest of their lives. Neither held another official role. They effectively became celebrities, hosting parties and travelling between Paris and New York. The Duke and Duchess were not invited to the coronation of Elizabeth II in 1953. Many members of the royal family never forgave Wallace. Queen Mary refused to meet her and the Queen Mother never forgave her for causing the abdication. In the 1960s, the Duke and Duchess did attend events in the UK. They attended the centenary of Queen Mary's birth in 1967 and the memorial service of the Princess Royal in 1967 also. They refused an invitation to attend the investiture of Charles, Prince of Wales citing that Charles would not want to have an aged aunt and uncle there. In the 1960s, the Duke's health deteriorated and he had operations on an aneurysm and a detached retina. In 1971, the Duke was diagnosed with throat cancer and underwent treatment. The Queen visited the couple in May 1972 and 10 days later, on the 28th of May, 1972, David died. His body was returned to Britain, but he was not given a state funeral due to the abdication. David was buried in the Royal Burial Ground at Frogmore. His wife died in 1986 and was also buried alongside him. George VI was born at York Cottage on the Sandringham Estate during the reign of his great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. His parents were the then Duke and Duchess of York, the future King George V and Queen Mary. Born on the 14th of December, 1895, the 34th anniversary of the death of his great-grandfather. He was named in honour of him, going by the name of Albert. Albert was often ill and was more sensitive than his siblings. He was cared for by nannies, which was normal for aristocratic families at the time. Albert developed a stammer that would last for the rest of his life. Due to knock knees, Albert was forced to wear painful corrective splints. On the 22nd of January 1901, his great-grandmother passed away and his grandfather became Edward VII. In 1909, Albert attended the Royal Naval College, coming last in his class in 1911. Albert progressed to the Royal Naval College at Dartmouth, nonetheless. In 1910, his grandfather died and his father became George V. 
In 1913, Albert spent six months on the training ship HMS Cumberland, working as a midshipman. Three weeks after the outbreak of the First World War, Albert was evacuated from the ship to Aberdeen, where he had his appendix removed. During the war, Albert saw little combat due to ill health caused by a duodenal ulcer which was operated on in 1917. Albert served in the Royal Air Force. He qualified as an RAF pilot in 1919 and was promoted to squadron leader. That year, Albert entered Trinity College where he studied history, economics and civics for a year. In 1920, he was created the Duke of York and began to take on more royal duties representing his father. Due to his stammer and shyness, he appeared less confident in public than his older brother David. Unusual for the time, Albert was given freedom to choose a wife. In 1920, Albert developed an infatuation with a married socialite called Lady Lockborough. He put an end to the relationship after being promised a dukedom. That year, he met Lady Elizabeth Bowes-Lyne for the first time since childhood. He fell in love with her and proposed to her three times. The first two times, Elizabeth rejected his proposal, as she was reluctant to give up her freedom to become a member of the royal family. Eventually, Elizabeth agreed to marry him, and they were wed on the 26th of April, 1923. They had two children together, Elizabeth and Margaret, born in 1926 and 1930, respectively. They lived in London and led a quiet life. From 1925, Albert began to see Lionel Logue, a speech therapist, to help him with his stammer. In 1936, George V died, and after less than a year on the throne, his successor and Albert's brother, Edward VIII, abdicated his throne. Albert, as first in line, became George VI, taking that regnal name to emphasise continuity with his father. Albert was forced to buy Balmoral Castle and Sandringham House from David to ensure that they passed down through the hands of the monarch. David had inherited them from their father, the previous king. Albert invested his wife with the Order of the Garter on his 41st birthday. George VI's coronation was held in Westminster Abbey on the 12th of May 1937 and in a break with tradition, Queen Mary, Albert's mother, attended the ceremony to show support for her son. In 1939, the King and Queen toured Canada and the United States, becoming the first reigning monarch of Britain to visit North America. The trip was a success, with the King and Queen being received enthusiastically by the public. It forged a strong bond of friendship between the US President and the British monarch. War was declared in September 1939 when Germany invaded Poland. George VI and Queen Elizabeth stayed in Buckingham Palace while their daughters moved to Windsor Castle. They refused to evacuate from London. During the Blitz in September 1940, the King and Queen narrowly escaped death when two German bombs exploded in the courtyard of Buckingham Palace, damaging part of the palace. The British royal family were also subjected to rationing and the same deprivations as the rest of the country. The King and Queen provided morale to the public, visiting affected areas throughout the UK. During George VI's reign, much of the British Empire dissolved, with many countries becoming independent nations. The Statute of Westminster of 1931 acknowledged that the Dominions were separate sovereign states. The Empire became a voluntary association of independent states known as the Commonwealth. Britain partitioned India into two independent countries. India and Pakistan in 1947 and both countries left the Commonwealth. George VI relinquished the title of Emperor of India.
Many other countries also left the Commonwealth. The stress of becoming king and the stress of the war hastened the decline of the king's health. The king smoked heavily and developed lung cancer and Berger's disease, as well as other ailments associated with smoking. His wife, children and son-in-law, the Duke of Edinburgh, represented the king when he was ill. His eldest daughter, Elizabeth, and her husband, Philip, went on tour to Australia via Kenya at his request. He saw them off from London Airport, and this would be his last public appearance. He passed away six days later on the 6th of February 1952. His daughter flew back to the UK upon hearing of his death. The Lion in State occurred from the 11th of February and his funeral took place four days later on the 15th of February. He was buried in the Royal Vault before being transferred to the King George VI Memorial Chapel in St George's 1869. Elizabeth II is the eldest child of George VI and his wife Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. In 1936, her father ascended the throne after his brother abdicated. At 10 years old, Elizabeth was thrust into the position of heir presumptive and only 16 years later, she ascended the throne herself after the premature death of her father. Elizabeth was born on the 21st of April 1926 to George VI, born Albert, and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. She was born during the reign of George V. At the time of her birth, her parents were the Duke and Duchess of York. Elizabeth was nicknamed Lilibet by her family, based off what she called herself when she was a toddler. Elizabeth had only one other sibling, Princess Margaret, who was born in 1930, and the two sisters were very close, being educated together at home by their governess Marion Crawford. As a young child, Elizabeth was quite sensible and mature for her age. Elizabeth was never expected to become queen. Until 1936, she was third in line to the throne after her uncle Edward VIII and her father, and it was expected that her uncle would marry and have children. However, that all changed when her grandfather George V died and her uncle Edward VIII became king. He abdicated only 11 months later to marry Wallace Simpson and Elizabeth's father became king. As such, Elizabeth would became heir presumptive. She was not heir apparent as male preference primogeniture was in use at the time and if her parents had another child, a son, Elizabeth would not be the heir. From then on, Elizabeth would also receive education in constitutional history in Eton College. A Girl Guides company was set up in Buckingham Palace so Elizabeth and Margaret could meet with girls their own age. In 1939, World War II started and the royal family lived in Balmoral Castle, then Sandringham House, before living in Windsor Castle for the duration of the war. During the war, the princesses staged pantomimes. In 1940, Elizabeth made her first radio broadcast addressing the children of the UK to raise spirits. In 1942, Elizabeth was appointed Colonel of the Grenadier Guards and she visited them the following year during her first solo public appearance. In 1944, Elizabeth was made one of the five councillors of state in case her father became incapacitated. During the war, Elizabeth trained as a driver and mechanic, achieving the rank of honorary junior commander. The war ended in Europe in May 1945 and Elizabeth and Margaret went into the crowds in secret in the streets of London to celebrate. In 1947, Elizabeth went on her first overseas tour to South Africa and she made her famous pledge on the 21st birthday that she would devote herself to the Commonwealth and to her country. By the time the speech was made, Elizabeth was secretly engaged to Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark, her second cousin once removed. They had met in 1934 and began exchanging letters. In July 1947, their engagement was publicly announced. 
The match was met with both support and opposition. Philip was a foreign born prince with the little money and whose sisters had married German men with Nazi links. The marriage went ahead anyway, with Philip renouncing his Greek and Danish titles and converting to Anglianism. Before the wedding, Philip was given the title of Duke of Edinburgh and his Royal Highness. Elizabeth and Philip married on the 20th of November 1947 and were followed uh, just under a year later by a son, Charles, and a daughter, Anne, in 1950. The early years of their marriage were generally happy with the couple living abroad intermittently in Malta. As the king's health began to fail, Elizabeth stood in for him. In early 1952, Elizabeth and Philip went on a tour of Australia and New Zealand, stopping in Kenya first. On the 6th of February 1952, the king died and Philip broke the news to Elizabeth. She had left the UK as a princess and returned as a queen. She chose the regnal name of Elizabeth and was thus Elizabeth II. One of the first issues that came up was the name of the royal house. As was customary at the time, when a woman married a man, the woman would take the man's surname and her children would have their father's surname. Several people assumed the royal house's name would be Mountbatten, but this was disliked by Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister at the time, and Elizabeth's grandmother, Queen Mary, who had been there when the house's name was first changed to Windsor in 1917. In April 1952, a declaration was issued stating that Windsor would continue to be the name of the royal house and in 1960, the surname of Mountbatten Windsor would be used from then on by the male line descendants of Elizabeth and Philip who did not carry royal titles, as is the case in Prince Edward's children. Queen Mary died in March 1953, less than three months before the coronation. Mary had requested that the coronation go ahead as planned before her death. On the 2nd of June 1953, the coronation was held and was the first to be televised except the anointing and communion parts of the ceremony. Elizabeth and Philip went on a seven-month tour of the Commonwealth in 1953 and Elizabeth was the first British monarch to visit Australia and New Zealand. As monarch, one of the few powers she held was to appoint a Prime Minister. In 1963, Elizabeth appointed the Earl of Home as Prime Minister on the advice of the previous Prime Minister Harold Macmillan. However, the move was criticised and in 1965 Elizabeth was relieved of this power after the Conservatives adopted a mechanism of electing a new leader. Nine years after Anne's birth, Elizabeth gave birth to her third child, Andrew, the first child to be born to a reigning British monarch since 1857, and her fourth child, Edward, was born in 1964. In 1972, Elizabeth toured Yugoslavia, becoming the first British monarch to visit a communist country. In 1977, Elizabeth celebrated her Silver Jubilee, and the following year, Lord Mountbatten, her uncle-in-law, was assassinated by the Provisional IRA, a blow to the royal family. During the 80s, the Queen survived two assassination attempts, one during the Trooping of the Colour in 1981, and the second while in New Zealand, also in 1981. What became known as her Annus Horribilis, 1992 marked the end of two of her children's marriages, Andrew separated from his wife Sarah in March and Anne divorced Captain Mark Phillips in April. Mauritius removed Elizabeth as head of state and a fire broke out in Windsor Castle. During the 80s and 90s, the media began to intrude more into the lives of the royal family, often publishing things such as photos and videos and audio tapes without the permission of the royal family. In 1993, the Queen sued the Sun newspaper 
after it published the text of her annual Christmas message, days before it was to air. In August 1997, Princess Diana was killed in a car crash. The Queen's popularity greatly diminished during this brief period, after the Queen failed to appear for a week and also failed to fly the flag over Buckingham Palace at half mass. 2002 marked the Queen's Golden Jubilee and her 55th wedding anniversary. Her sister and her mother passed away in early 2002 and this dealt a hard blow to the Queen to lose two very close members of her family. In 2007, Elizabeth became the first British monarch to celebrate a diamond wedding anniversary and in 2011, she became the first British monarch to visit the Republic of Ireland. 2012 marked 60 years on the throne for Elizabeth and she became the first head of state to open two Olympics, the first being in 1976. In 2015, she became the longest reigning British monarch, surpassing her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. In March 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic hit the UK and the Queen, with her husband, moved to Windsor Castle. On the 6th of April 2021, Prince Philip died at the age of 99 with Elizabeth by his side. As COVID-19 restrictions were in place, only 30 people were allowed to attend the funeral. That Christmas, she remarked about Philip. That mischievous, inquiring twinkle was as bright at the end as when I first set eyes on him. On the 6th of February 2022, Elizabeth became the first British monarch to reach 70 years on the throne. Due to health reasons, she missed the state opening of Parliament for the first time in 59 years. Charles, her son, and William, her grandson, opened Parliament for her. She attended the first day of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, but was unfortunately unable to attend the rest, with various other members of her family taking the lead for her. On the 8th of September 2022, Buckingham Palace released a statement to the public stating that the Queen was under medical supervision. Members of her immediate family, including her four children, travelled to Balmoral Castle, where the Queen was staying. That afternoon, Queen Elizabeth passed away at the age of 96. Her death was announced to the public that evening. Her cause of death was recorded as old age. She had been queen for 70 years, longer than any previous British monarch and the second longest reign ever recorded for a head of state or monarch. Her funeral was held on the 19th of September 2022 and she was interred at the King George VI Memorial Chapel beside her parents, her sister and her husband. She was immediately succeeded by her eldest son Charles III as King of the United Kingdom. Charles III was born on the 14th of November 1948 during the reign of his grandfather George VI. He was the first child of Philip Mountbatten and Princess Elizabeth, the then Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh. He grew up with three siblings, Anne, Andrew and Edward. In 1952 his grandfather died and his mother became Queen Elizabeth II. Charles became heir apparent. Charles attended his mother's coronation in 1953. When he turned five years old, Charles's formal education began and a governess was appointed to oversee his education. In 1956, Charles started classes at Hill House School in London. Following on from this, Charles attended Cheam Preparatory School and Gordonston. Charles was the first heir to the British throne to be educated in a school rather than private tutors. Charles found Gordonston to be difficult and abusive due to the bullying he received from students while there. However, he did praise the school for helping him to come out of his shell. Charles spent two terms in 1966 in Geelong Grammar School in Australia and he really enjoyed his time there. 
While at Gordonston, Charles became head boy and left school in 1967. Charles attended Trinity College, Cambridge, where he studied archaeology and anthropology, before transferring to a history course. He also attended University College of Wales to study Welsh history and language for a term. He graduated with a 2-2 BA and he was awarded a Master of Arts from Cambridge in 1975. In 1958, Charles was created Prince of Wales, but his investiture was not held until the 1st of July, 1969. During the 1970s, he served in the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy. Throughout his youth, Charles was linked with several women, but none were serious aside from Camilla Shand. She was not considered to be an appropriate bride for a future king due to her having had previous relationships, but Charles was infatuated with her. The relationship ended in the early 1970s, but began again in earnest in the 1980s, when Charles's first marriage had failed. In 1979, Charles's great uncle, Lord Mountbatten, was assassinated by the IRA. During this morning, he became close to Lady Diana Spencer, he met her in 1977 when he was dating her older sister Sarah. The press and paparazzi caught wind of the courtship and the intense media speculation prompted Charles to marry her. His father had strongly encouraged him to do so, so as not to damage Diana's reputation. They got engaged in February 1981 and were wed on the 29th of July 1981. They had two children together, William and Harry. Though they tried to make their marriage work, the marriage was doomed to fail. Their 13 year age gap, coupled with their incompatibility, led to the marriage breaking down and Charles resuming his relationship with Camilla Shand, who had since married and taken her husband's surname, Parker Bowles. Diana also began to have affairs with numerous men around the same time. In December 1992, the couple separated, and in 1996, they divorced. A year later, Diana was killed in a car crash. Following this, Charles made his relationship with Camilla public in 1999, and they became engaged in February 2005. They got married on the 9th of April 2005 in a civil ceremony, followed with a religious blessing. Charles's parents only attended the religious blessing as the Queen was the supreme governor of the Church of England and this would have put her in a difficult position if she had attended the civil ceremony. As Prince of Wales, Charles undertook official duties on behalf of the Queen. He performed investitures and attended funerals of foreign dignitaries and independent celebrations. He also met with and supported various charities. He also opened Parliament for the Queen when she was ill. On the 8th of September 2022, Queen Elizabeth II passed away. As the longest serving British heir apparent at over 70 years, Charles is also the oldest person to assume the British throne at the age of 73. He took the regnal name of Charles III. Although there was speculation that he would assume a different name, like George, to avoid the negative connotations with the regnal name of Charles. On the 10th of September 2022, Charles was publicly proclaimed King by the Ascension Council, which was televised for the first time.